Many people ask us about um, LPDAs, uh, lock periodic dipole arrays, and Yagi's. Now the problem is that many people ask for Yagi's, but they actually want the LPDA. Now I'm just going to make a quick sketch um, showing you an LPDA. Essentially, if you look at it, is an antenna that's got sort of regularly decreasing elements. They get closer and closer together, like that. And there's normally a boom in the middle. And all of these elements are driven. Now, the reason why LPDA works at a very broad frequency band is that would be the frequency, the lowest frequency that it responds to, and that would be the highest. And you can see in this case, if you sort of roughly look at it, this guy will be four times, this frequency could be, for example, about 700 megahertz. That would be then 2.7 gigahertz, 2.8, if I do my maths properly. A Yagi is different. A Yagi typically has got one, what's known as a director. Often this guy here is like a folded guy. And then a number of, this is a reflector. These are directors. Um, these antennas are often used for TV. So if you look outside houses, this is TV antennas. Um, there's also a boom in the middle. But there's only one driven element, and that's this guy. Now the problem with this is that if you look at this guy, response versus frequency. It will have the lowest frequency corresponding to that element, the highest one. So F low and F high. And it will do something like this. It will have sort of smooth, slightly increasing tendency towards the high frequency. What this car would do, this is essentially a single frequency antenna. So normally what they look like, for, if they're the same length, they would often go higher than the lock periodic at one point, And then they just drop off. Much, much narrower frequency band. In the beginning of cell phones, we used these because often we only had 900 megahertz and we only needed an antenna there. But of course, nowadays, we've got things running from about 700 megahertz up to 2.7 gigahertz. These antennas have become fairly useless, even though people still refer to these ones, which are the real ones we need to use for broadband, as Yagi's. They're not Yagi's, they're lock periodics. So just to give you some examples, this here would be a Yagi antenna. You can see that's the reflector. That's the driven element. And you can see these ones are just passive directors. Okay. And this guy really operates at the frequency of this dipole here. Sometimes they may also have reflectors sitting here, here. Still a Yagi. Okay. Um, this is Ups. Another example. Unfortunately, these ones are fairly short. You get them with if they're long they don't typically have more reflectors unless they sort of offset but they could have many more directors the more directors they get the sharper this little narrow frequency band becomes so even though they're very very neat antennas for narrow frequency bands they are essentially not useful in today's cellular comms this of course is our antenna the pointing lpda 92 and here you can see what i mentioned you can see these elements here operate about 600, 650 megahertz. As the frequency increases, it uses the smaller elements. And these cars here can take you up to 3 gigahertz. You can see how this is much, much smaller than this. And that describes the frequency band. If you look at them, there's a transmission line here that actually runs through here. And it feeds this antenna at the tip. That's something I didn't notice. These antennas are always fed at the small end. And then a wave is launched, and this is a transmission line. And wherever the wave finds a suitable length of elements is where it radiates, which is why it's actually a magical antenna. It moves, it scales itself with a frequency. So if frequency is low, these guys will ignore it because they're too short. And for example, this region here would radiate, giving you a directional beam forwards over a very, very wide bandwidth. I hope this gives everyone a nice idea of the difference between LPDA and the antennas.